CT dose is on everyone's mind at the moment. Who better to ask to speak about it than a Swedish medical physicist, Professor Matt Danielson. Matt, welcome to ECR. Thank you very much indeed. Now, CT dose, um, would you say that awareness of, of, of dose issues has become increased? Do uh, are radiologists doing enough about CT dose at the moment? I think we have a huge uh, dose awareness and, and this is a, a main development the last uh, 10 years. Uh, maybe in Sweden and Germany we cared all along, but in many other countries not so much. And now everybody cares, maybe even too, too much. And you only hear dose and CT like it's a risk with CT. We should not forget why you do a CT scan in the first place to get important diagnostic information. And at some point if the dose is becoming too low, uh, you, you, you risk uh, the, the quality of that information and uh, that could be the life of the patient and that may be a whole lot more dangerous than a low, low, dose, ex low, low, low dose of x-rays. Good. I suppose it's a case-by-case -case basis that you really need to look at the individual patient and decide what's best for them. Is that what you would advise radiologists to do? Absolutely, I think they are doing that, probably could do it even more and you need to, 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 to weigh different risks against each other. If you are very old, you are basically in, insensitive to, to radiation, to diagnostic radiation dose uh, and uh, you should think about the iodine contrast agent instead, try to reduce the amount of iodine. And uh, if you suffer from acute stroke, where we now have like possibilities for therapy but you need fast diagnostic and accurate information, uh, radiation dose is not your problem. Now what do you think has contributed to this increased awareness of, of, of dose as an issue? Well, it's a, it's a good question. I think, uh, for one thing, it's a competition between the vendors where, where low radiation dose has, has been a major sales point now for, for several years and this is still ongoing. And then I think it's a, it's a guidelines being develop, de developed both nationally and on a European or level through the Eurosafe initiative. So I think uh, this all, all together plays important roles. Okay. And medical physicists as well, they have a very, very vital role to play. Would you say that, what, what would you advise radiologists to do in, in terms of collaborating with medical physicists? Well, I think that, that, first of all, if you don't know the radiation dose for your procedures, then you cannot, like, then it's hard to try to start reducing them or, or, or whatever. So work with the, your medical physicist and, and uh, estimate, measure the radiation dose, monitor it for uh, equipment you have and for new equipment. Uh, I think that's very important. Okay. Now, you mentioned vendors and industry. Do you think industry is doing enough in terms of CT dose? Yes, I think uh, they have done everything in terms of iterative reconstruction techniques, have made a, a big difference. Today's detectors are working, I would say, at, 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 at the limit. So I think uh, all the, the low-hanging fruits have been picked. And I don't see any revolutions coming like the next year. You would, it would be like a major technology uh, development leap, like uh, photon counting detectors or something like that, but okay. not the next 12 months. So how do these detectors, how do they contribute to, to um, awareness and control of dose? How do they contribute? Uh, excuse me, how do you mean? How do um, the, the, the counters, how do the, the, the CT photon de detectors, how do they, um, what's their um, how do they act? How do they? So, so with with a photon counting technique, you can uh, you can cut all of the electronic noise, which means that there is no like lower limit from a technical point of view how low you can go in radiation dose. So this is one important reason why you can lower the dose. Uh, the most important thing is that you, you they are much more efficient if they have high energy resolution to to detect iodine, which is used in almost all examinations. So this means that the the, the radiation dose can be reduced you will still see the iodine as good as today. Okay, Mats, and I have to ask you, um, the Karolinska has been very much in the news recently in the last few weeks um, with the departure of the chairman of the board um, over an alleged case of fraud involving a surgeon. Um, has this led to much um, discussion and, and change um, within the institution? 
Well, it's uh, seeing it from the the engineering university. It's it's. Uh, it, it's a, a lot of discussions ongoing. I, I think uh, I, in a large institution like the Karolinska, it's, in, it's inevitable that you will have some problems with you, you, you hire the wrong person, in this case the wrong doctor, once in a while. Uh, in this case, for sure, you can improve on, on, on procedures, and, and I think the bad news is that, as, is that it happened. The good news is that you can, you can learn from this, and I think that Karolinska will be a strong research institution a few years from now and uh, in the future. <laughs> okay, well it's a big week for Sweden. Um, I'm sure you're looking forward to it. I hope it goes well and best of luck for the rest of the Congress. Thank you very much. <laughs>